The United States is only two days away from financial collapse. Unless lawmakers can strike a budget deal to avoid default, rival Democrats and Republicans have been stuck in a loop for over two weeks, with most government work crippled. Anissa Nawi reports on the deadlock that could spark a domino effect around the world. This self-inflicted shutdown is causing panic around the world as Washington scrambles to avoid default. The global economy is at risk of being thrust back into recession. While at home, millions will have to cut their losses either way, deal or no deal. Businesses that were unable to work at full capacity, public sector contracts, which will see delays in payment, and unemployment, which is already on the rise due to the shutdown. But possibly the most ironic thing about this government shutdown now in its third week is that it's not saving money. It's costing America at least $160 million a day. Now, given the crisis has entered its 15th day, the overall costs could be as much as $2.5 billion. And that number, of course, is expected to grow. Now, the political debate is hampering a rise in the debt ceiling, but also leaving sick Americans out in the cold. For each week, of the shutdown, hundreds of patients cannot be accepted for treatment at the National Institutes of Health, including cancer patients. 75% of the staff is not working because of this shutdown, and it's the patients in need of medical treatment that are suffering. Veterans are outraged at the closing of public parks and war monuments due to this shutdown. The government has run out of cash to pay some 800,000 federal workers during the deadlock. Over the weekend, thousands came out in D.C. and stormed barricades at a World War II memorial calling for the government to stop using veterans as political pawns in this battle for the budget. Well, another group of retired military personnel are set to protest here in Washington, D.C. this week again, starting their rally at that war memorial. The Department of Veteran Affairs is seeing the backlog of, a disability, of disability claims grow, along with the frustration and uncertainty among the military community. Also, prominent faith leaders are set to join locked out workers at Republican offices to pray and march for an end to the shutdown. They're expected to call attention to each representative's stance on the debt ceiling, encouraging them to vote to end this standoff. So as the shutdown continues, we are seeing more and more protests in the Capitol and more and more people in different groups demanding the government do their job and get a budget passed. The executive director at the American Jobs Alliance told us how lawmakers have a knack for intimidating the public. I did not win the Nobel Prize in economics today, uh, you may have noticed, but uh, it, it does seem to be that it could have quite a catastrophic effect. Uh, we're talking about uh, global economic financial chaos is what's being described, and uh, I, I, I prefer not to play uh, roulette like that. The depths of human folly are fathomless. But we're talking about politicians now. So if the depths of human folly are fathomless, with politicians, it's even worse. Days by Washington's are floundering over averting economic disaster. China's calling for a de-Americanized world. U.S. default would strike a serious blow to the Asian powerhouse, which sits uh, on more than a trillion dollars in U.S. treasuries. Now, China expert Andrew Liang says that Beijing's already cutting loose from its binding burden. The situation is changing um, because um, China's uh, surplus and foreign currency reserve is mounting and the U.S. Um, uh, seems to be printing money uh, with no end in sight. The U.S. dollar has lost um, a great deal of its value. We are seeing um, that China has set up uh, special uh, free trade zones um, to speed up the process of um, uh, of the renminbi as an international currency. Um, so all signs point to the fact that the renminbi is likely to become fully convertible maybe within a decade.